Welcome to Statics. You need to know how to incorporate springs, cables, pulleys, and inclined planes into your free body diagrams and how to solve problems that contain these elements. Let's begin with springs. We will assume that the springs we analyze in this course all have a linear relationship between the force applied to the spring and the length that the spring displaces, or in other words, elongates or compresses. Here is the linear spring equation. It equates the applied force, F, to the displacement, delta. The spring constant, K, represents the spring stiffness. If K is big, the spring displaces only a little under a unit load. If K is small, the spring displaces a lot under a unit load. The applied load on a spring can be a tension load or pull. In this case, the displacement of the spring is an elongation and the final length will be the original length L plus delta. The applied load can also be a compression load or push. In this case, the displacement of the spring is a compression and the final length will be the original length L minus delta. When using the spring equation, we typically have one unknown variable. If we know the applied force and the spring constant, we can solve for the displacement. If we know the displacement and the spring constant, we can solve for the applied force. In a design scenario, we may know the force and have a maximum limit on displacement. Then we can solve for the spring constant required. Here is a static system consisting of a mass, D, supported by cables, and a spring and their connecting supports. If we consider gravity pulling down on mass D, the spring is subjected to a tension force. Our free body diagram will look like this. The spring is replaced with a tension force pulling on particle A. Here's another static system consisting only of a mass, gravity, a spring, and a support. In this system, the spring will be subjected to a compression force with its loaded length shorter than its unloaded length. A free body diagram may be drawn like this. Note that force AB, which represents the spring, is drawn towards particle A. Let's move on to cables. The traffic light in this system is being supported by cables. You will be seeing a lot of systems involving cables for the next little while. Now a cable may refer to a steel multi-strand wire cable as often used in engineering applications, like the cable in a crane but it can also be a chain or rope or some sort of cord. A few things to keep in mind about cables. First, cables naturally take a position in the direction of the applied load. What I mean by this is that when you draw a free body diagram of a system supported by cables, the force vectors point in the direction of the cable length from the point where it attaches to the particle or body. Next, the self weight of the cable is assumed to be negligible, so we ignore it in our problems. Next, we assume that the cable will not stretch when loaded. You could say that this is a bit of a stretch, but we'll assume it is not. Next, cables can only be loaded in tension or pulled. They may not be subjected to compression. And finally, cables may have a maximum capacity. Actually, all cables have a maximum load capacity, but sometimes we ignore it in the problems in this class. Obviously, you should be aware of this information if you're actually using a cable. A problem we might see may tell us that a cord can hold a maximum force of 800 pounds before it breaks. This does not necessarily mean that the cord will have an 800 pound load applied in our problem. Instead, the force in the cord can vary between 0 and 800 pounds. We will look at this a little more in an example problem. I just said that a cable may only be loaded in tension or pulled. What do you do if you need to transfer a compression load? Well, a spring may be able to take compression or you could use some sort of compression element. These may be referred to as a rod, a column, a strut, a link, or some other term depending on its use. Let's move on to pulleys. Pulleys are used to support and change directions in cables. We assume that all the pulleys we encounter in this class are frictionless. A couple of key things to know when working with pulleys. First, the tension in the cable on one side of the pulley wheel is equal to the tension in the cable on the other side of the pulley wheel. It does not matter what direction the cables on either side of the pulley are acting in. We always take the force on both sides to be equal. But note how the pulley changes the force direction in the cable. Here is a system consisting of a mass, gravity, cables, and a pulley at point C. 
we would draw the free body diagram of particle A like this. Note the direction of force AC. It is acting in the direction of the cable at point A. Also note that the cable section from C to D at the right of the pulley does not influence my free body diagram. However, if I needed to know the force acting at support D, I would show it like this. I know the force acting at support D is equal to cable force TAC. Let's move on to inclined planes, specifically smooth inclined planes, because we are not ready yet to talk about friction. But let me start with a horizontal plane. Suppose that we have a mass supported on a horizontal plane with gravity acting vertically on the mass. A free body diagram of the mass would look like this. The supporting reactive force balancing the weight of the object is labeled with an N because we typically call it a normal force. A normal force is always perpendicular to the supporting plane. That applies to inclined planes as well. Now we have a mass supported on a smooth plane inclined at an angle theta. Your experience tells you that this mass is not stable. Some additional supports are needed if we want it to remain static. But let's just focus on the forces on the mass in this condition. We have the weight of the object, which is mass times gravity. We also have the normal force acting perpendicular to the plane. You can see why this condition is not static. The forces are not balanced in the horizontal direction. Now, it's fairly common for learners to mess up the direction of the normal force, so pay attention. If I draw a horizontal line over from the head of the normal force, I see the angle of the plane, theta. Because the normal force is perpendicular to the plane, then this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. If I draw a vertical line down from the head of the normal force, I form a right angle with the horizontal line. That means this angle must be theta. We also see that the direction of the weight force relative to the line of action of the normal force is also theta based on these similar angles. These same rules regarding direction of the normal force apply to objects of any shape, not just boxes. The normal force is always perpendicular to the supporting plane. Let's look at this one more time, but with similar triangles. Here's our mass on an inclined plane, with the inclination specified using a 3-4-5 triangle. Here is a free body diagram of the weight and normal force. Let's look at the orientation of the normal force. If I draw a horizontal line at the head of the normal force, I see an angle similar to the plane orientation. Notice I filled in the angle that is the larger of the two non-right angles for clarity. Since the normal force is perpendicular to the supporting plane, then the angle between the normal and the horizontal line must be the small angle of our right triangle. If I draw in a vertical line at the head of the normal force, I form a right angle with the horizontal line. That means this angle must be the larger of the two non-right angles. We also see that the direction of the weight force relative to the line of action of the normal force is also the larger of the two non-right angles.